FF7 Remake was known for being a very linear story driven game, but Rebirth takes full advantage of the source material it is adapting. There are so many quests, merchants, objectives and places to see that it's easy to miss particularly rewarding activities, or end up beating your head on the wall trying to defeat an optional boss that you're not quite ready for. That's why we're here with this list of 13 things to do first in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. In Chapter 1 you'll be reliving one of Cloud's past experiences, so there's not much to miss in this chapter. Our tips kick off once the team has had a rest and you're let loose in the City of Calm. Before you even leave the Inn in the morning, be sure to access the DLC slash bonuses tab in the System submenu. If you played the Rebirth demo, or if you have saves from Final Fantasy VII Remake or the Episode Intermission DLC, you'll be rewarded with different bonuses. The prior saves reward you with Leviathan and Ramu summoning materia, and the demo bonus provides you with a Moogle accessory plus a pack of consumable items. These rewards are most useful at the start of the game, so grab them while they'll make a difference. This next tip is more of a thing not to do first. Weapons vendors will offer weapons for sale, but these same weapons are all discoverable in the world for free, inside of purple chests. Buying weapons from vendors is a great fallback if you haven't found a chest that holds a new weapon in a while, but when you're just starting out, the sleek sword for Cloud that they're offering in Calm can be found in a chest that's almost impossible to miss near the abandoned dock in the grasslands. You're much better off saving your limited supply of starting gill for other items, like these Queen's Blood starter packs. As you leave Calm, Broden will hand you a transmuter and a bundle of crafting materials. Item transmuting becomes very valuable in the open world, as the majority of combat rewards give you crafting materials, meaning that to make the most of your inventory, you need to use the transmuter. Each time you transmute a new recipe, you'll gain craftsmanship experience, and the higher your craftsmanship level, the more recipes you can unlock, including unique recipes for equipment and healing items that you can only get by crafting. Check this menu every now and then, especially if you've maxed out your carrying capacity, to see if you can craft something new, or even just to top up your supply of potions. Unlike FF7 Remake, Rebirth features vast open world segments that invite you to explore and discover their numerous tasks and trials. It's easy to get distracted off the beaten path in these areas, and even easier still to miss vital mechanics when you're just starting out. Once you leave the City of Calm and enter the Grasslands, we suggest you follow the main objectives until you reach the Chocobo Ranch. Here you'll unlock the ability to ride chocobos, which not only improve your traversal speed, but also the speed at which you can pick up crafting materials from the ground. You won't be able to ride chocobos everywhere through the game, and in new areas you will have to retain chocobos to unlock them again, but they're an excellent help when you're exploring the world, and they're just so cute. Not only will you find chocobos at the ranch, but you'll also be reunited with Chadley. What a pleasant surprise! You'll be seeing a lot more of him in Rebirth, as he's in charge of assigning and tracking a whole suite of open world objectives for you. Unlocking these objectives before you do much exploring is ideal, as many locations won't be accessible until you speak to Chadley, like these Remna Wave Towers for example. You'll need to backtrack to them later if you find them before speaking to Chadley first. Activating nearby towers is a great way to see all nearby objectives, so, be sure to activate any towers you see so that you don't miss other nearby locations. The Grasslands are just one open world section of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, but there are more to come throughout the adventure, and these two tips about Chocobos and Chadley stay relevant with most of these similarly open sections of the game. You should always make it a priority to seek out those birds and nerds each time the game opens back up to you. Chadley also offers a newly revamped set of combat simulator challenges for you to best, including summon challenges, which unlock summoning materia. If you're finding the summon fights too difficult, we would suggest you track down the summon crystals marked by Chadley's intel, as they make the fights much easier, as well as strengthen that summon materia once you have it. You don't earn any extra rewards for defeating the summons at full might, except bragging rights, so there's no shame in acquiring the materia on a lower difficulty 
and coming back to the Full Might fight later if you feel like challenging yourself. You should also go ahead and complete the other combat challenges as well, including the tutorial missions, no matter your confidence levels. You'll gain XP, potentially learn something you didn't know before from a tooltip, and, most importantly, you'll gain new materia as a reward for completing each one. As you earn new summons from Chadley, you may notice that these summons can be upgraded to level 4 by finding the aforementioned crystals, whereas the summon materia that you start with cannot be raised above level 1. Keep this in mind as you find more and more new materia, and start prioritizing having these summons equipped over the default summons so that you can enjoy their stat bonuses. Not far to the east of the Chocobo Ranch, you'll find a Mog Stool. Inside is a realm full of Moogles and Mooglets, and if you successfully complete their Corral minigame, you'll unlock the Moogle Emporium store. This is a store where you can purchase things with Moogle Medals, which you'll earn by breaking Shinra crates around the world, or by digging up treasure spots on Chocobo Back. You can buy rare crafting materials, unique accessories, or character manuscripts, which provide a significant number of skill points for you to use to upgrade your characters. We suggest only buying the crafting materials if you absolutely have to, and saving your medals for use on the accessories and manuscripts instead. Speaking of skill points, it's easy to get lost in this new statistical and ability unlock system. Essentially, your characters earn a certain amount of skill points, or SP, and you spend this SP in your folios to unlock new combat abilities and statistical improvements. Each character can be tailored in different ways, and you can refund your SP at any time to try different combinations of unlocks. As a general rule, we would suggest focusing on the orange circles to unlock synergy abilities and skills with other characters. These are flashy team-up attacks that can provide you with unique combat options. Getting the hang of using synergy in combat can be pretty overwhelming, so to learn more about synergy skills and abilities, check out our synergy video guide. Wow. On it. Early on, you'll be introduced to the new relationship system which represents how close Cloud is to each of his companions. Fostering these relationships throughout the game will provide you with unique cutscenes if your relationship levels are high enough at specific times. Each side quest you encounter will personally affect one of your crew, but you won't see who this side quest will affect until you start it. Once you have, open the map, then tab over to the quest screen to see which character portrait is overlaid on top of the quest icon. Completing these quests will deepen your relationships with those particular crew members, so if there's a particular member of your party that you want to strengthen your bond with, focus on completing each of their side quests as they crop up. Queen's Blood? While the new Queen's Blood card game is optional for the most part, there are parts of the campaign later on that more or less require you to interact with the minigame. While it's possible to clear those sections with the default deck, you'll be much better equipped to handle those challenges if you have some experience with the game. Plus, you'll gain some extra cards as rewards for defeating players that may come in handy further down the track. Try your luck against these starter opponents in and around Calm to get the hang of the game's quirks. Each open world section is so jam-packed with things for you to do that you can spend hours and hours in each zone. If you're finding yourself keen to push on to experience more of the story, don't worry about missing out on anything. You can't freely fast travel between regions, but you'll be able to travel back and forth between them via different means. In the next region of Junon, for example, you do this by completing Gabe's side quest at the Chocobo Ranch, called Stuck in a Rut, which also unlocks that region's new Chocobos for you too. Good bird. Look for the red icons on the map to find the transport stations that will take you from one region to another. With these activities and objectives under your belt, you should be well equipped to move forward in pursuit of Sephiroth. For more on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, you can find our comprehensive wiki, complete with more video guides on combat, things that are easy to miss, and much more. For all other things gaming, stick with IGN.